What is going on, peeps? Boy Versatile is back with another video. Back with a new graphic T Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Vegeta. Grillin' gone. Boo. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's not what we're here to talk about. Back with a new lens. Yes, it's about time I got a new lens. I won't put it like that. I mean, I got a lens about mm, three months ago. Well, in November. And that was the Sony 50mm f1.8 full frame. <clears throat> great lens definitely helped me step in my photography I actually did my first like couples shoot with this lens and it came in clutch of course i'm shooting with my 16 millimeter uh, sigma f1.4 lens aps-c not full frame i need to get that sony 20 mil full frame that's what i want to replace this lens with but that's not what we're here to talk about we are here today to pay homage to the sony Full frame 85 millimeter f1.8 yes creamy bokeh 67 millimeter filter thread wise lens yes i'm ready for this lens i'm about to explain why but before i do make sure you guys ignite that like button subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you guys hit that notification bell ding so well, you guys stay informed when i drop videos now let's get into it why did i get the sony fe85 mill i have another photo shoot coming up in the senior pictures or senior portraits uh for someone graduating high school and so doing some research talking with my friend josh bain if you guys didn't catch our podcast talking about photography taking senior pictures lenses and, and the like he said he shot his off in 85 and i was already kind of thinking about grabbing the 85 and one of the reasons was or one of the primary reasons was uh distance being able to further myself from the subject so that way they're more comfortable during the shoot, I'm more comfortable during the shoot, and I can still maintain that nice clarity or sharpness and detail and maintain a very good bokeh. Now, the 50 mil has a very nice bokeh. Even wide open at f1.8, it's still nice. Uh, you know, it blows out the subjects a little more in the background and it really separates your subject uh, from the defocused background. Now, what I typically like to do is shoot around like f2.8, and then if I really wanted to, step it up to get really good sharpness at f4. Uh, somewhere in between f2.8 and f4 is where I like to shoot pictures. I don't often shoot wide open. I did for me and my wife's uh, five-year anniversary photo shoot we did. It was really quick. Some of the pictures you saw on Instagram and Twitter, and I still have a few more to kind of show you guys, but I shot all that full-blown wide open f1 f1.8 on the 50 mil and i do like the fact that the background is very disfocused you really don't know what's going on in the background too much but sometimes there are objects that i like to use in the background to give the photo more life and that's why i shoot at like f2.8 f3.5 f4 is so that way i can get that subject in the background just to focus enough but not entirely to, to add that much more to the composition of the photo. And so that's why I got the FE 85 mil from Sony. I, I was considering the Viltrox. That one looked real nice and they're very comparable. One's not too bad off from the other one. It's just that this one's native glass and it's nice. I mean, it's, of course it has reputation. And funny enough, since this lens came out in like 2017, it is now april 2020 and there has not been an update to this which means sony must have did a very good job or they feel real confident in what they've done with this lens that they have not had to push out any updates for it so that's really the primary reason why i got this so, so that when i do shoot at f 2.8 f4 or even if i shoot wide open i'm getting very good the focused creamy bokeh that will complement my photos i take and then of course when i use this for b-roll in terms of video i won't have to worry about the motor within this over the 50 mil now of course i silent the video so this isn't as big of a deal but you know getting better learning how to use this to shoot b-roll gives me that much more confidence that it'll be that much more easy with this this used a dc motor with actuators which is why you got those noises and it was so loud i won't say so loud but of course you heard the motor moving in this and then when they sent out that software update not that long ago i think probably last year it kind of helped silence it some more but here there's a double linear motor in here that actually helps with that and it actually keeps things more quiet so a better motor in here means more quiet silent shooting for video and that's what i'm looking forward to as well 
<clears throat> now I know you guys are like, yo, take the lens out. Let me see the lens. But before I show you the lens, I want to show you what else I got. Now I ordered it through Amazon, but it was from Adorama. And the kit that I got with it in total turned out to be $605, $605. And I think you could get the lens for like $598. But for six hundred and five dollars, I'm like, why not? You get a nice carrying pouch for the lens. You get it from Slinger. That's what they gave me. So it's a nice carrying pouch. You can put the lens in. I'll probably demonstrate that here soon. And then you get Pro Optic Lens Essential Filter Kit for uh, the lens. Now, thankfully, my Sigma is a, has a 67 millimeter filter thread. So the UV filter, the polarizing filter, and the ND filter I currently have will still work with this lens. But I think this new, this ND filter is an ND2X, and I think the one I got from the other company is like an ND4, I think. So it's kind of gives me some more, and it's like, why not have, you know, some more little filters just in case some break or, or lose their quality. Now, of course, the filter that I want to get is the Polar Pro, uh, Peter McKenna version one day. I'm gonna get that, but I like the package you get with this because, well, now that I get to see it, if, I could, if it just comes, I'm about to rip this off. How about that? Put some strength into it. Boom. All right. Trash. So you get a nice little carrying pouch with it, and maybe you guys can see it there. But it's a nice carrying pouch, leather. Got a nice little button here that you pop open like that, and you get your filters. So. You get all three in in here they're all protected the nd2 is in the middle and the other two are block you know pr uh, protecting it so hey you guys yeah i'm not gonna pull them out right now i just wanted to kind of show you guys with these real quick so i'm excited to i don't really use filters anymore to tell you the truth like i haven't shot video outside in a while so using the filter hasn't been a big deal and i don't use the uv filter anymore when i take photos I don't know why I just haven't, I, you know, I think it's just better to just, you know, quick run and gun, grab some pictures and not have to worry about fussing with the filter. And then, um, yeah, for video, if I really had to, at least I have two filters to use. Now, if I ever want to get some interesting shots of water or if I wanted to try to do product photography on cars, I would probably pop on the polar filter to kind of adjust the light reflection to get a nice clean image. So I have these at my disposal when I decide I want to use that. I also got a lens leash right here that you attach onto the lens and the lens cap. So that way the cap could just hang free. You won't lose it. And then when you finish, it's really easy to just apply back on. I'm, I won't say I'm indifferent, but I'm contemplating not using it, even though I, at first glance, you're like, that's actually not a bad idea. I just don't know if I feel like having my cap dangling around. So that's one of the things I'm weary about with this is do I want my lens cap kind of dangling around while I'm not using it? Of course, I'm like, I mean, it wouldn't be bad because I'm only going to have it off when I'm shooting, but I guess it just depends on each situation and scenario. So I got the lens leash for this as well. And then last but not least of the kit, I got the optics can cleaning kit. And the reason why I like this is because it gave me a pouch I could put all this stuff in. The other kit I got with the Sigma lens did not give me an actual like pouch to put all this type of stuff in. But here I get another spray tool. I already got this one right here. I already got that one. Now I have another one and hopefully I don't cut myself I'm trying to get this open. Um, because why not? I'm about to take Tigress back out. There we go. A little bit of that DBZ muscle, you know what I'm saying? Time to hop in that hyperbolic time chamber. All right. All right, so this is an interesting little spray tool. Um, it's, it's a little smaller. Seems a little bit stronger, and I don't know if it's just because it's a little more compact, but, or oh, I just haven't used it. All right, so that top, I don't think needs to come off. It sprays out of there just fine. I can feel it on my face. So that works, that's nice. Um, got more garbage down here. And then you get the little carrying pouch. And in this carrying pouch that I'm very, very much, much, much excited for is I could put my little cleaning cloths that they provide and the cleaning spray and they provide disgusting cleaning spray. I hope, oh, that's all moldy in there. So I think I probably will be throwing this away because uh, it just looks a little moldy in there and I don't think I want to put that or apply that to my lens. 
this is the cleaning solution that they provided. I don't know if it's old or not, but it's definitely looking kind of old. Now, maybe if you shake it up, it will. Ew, I don't know about that. All righty. But I do have another one that's empty that I can fill with water or if I can find some cleaning solution for lenses that I can fill it up with. And then now I got a pouch that I can put it in. You also get this, which may be the cleaning brush. Yes, it is. So this is the little cleaning brush that you can use to kind of wipe your lens down. And I kind of like how it's in here. So it kind of protects the cleaning brush. So that way, when you do apply it to your lens, you won't scratch it or nothing like that. And then you get microfiber cloths from probiotic. You get a cleaning cloth and a micro fine cleaning cloth in this pouch. So I found this to be very, very handy. Here are the little moisten disposable cleaning wipes for coated optics. So I guess you would apply this to the wipe if anything stain the, the, the lens like in any debris if it wouldn't come off with the spray tool you could apply this and then i guess you could take the microfiber cloth and wipe it down with so i definitely like this pouch because this will fit in my upcoming camera bag that i will be showing you guys soon i got the peak design 20 liter it was like 80 bucks off on amazon so i scooped that up because i needed a new bag to facilitate all of this and it'll be my new work bag so that way i could take my camera with me all the time and that will be my new what's in my bag 3.0 so that'll be coming up whenever that gets here but now i have something that could fit in there and just make kind of just really fills everything complete you know what i'm saying so now that i've gotten all that fun stuff out the way it's time to actually show you guys the lens because i'm just as excited as you guys are and I'm ready to put this thing in practice. So once we pull that out, we flip this open. This is my second brand new lens. Uh, the 50 mil I bought from a friend, Matt Gessentana, if you guys know Matty G, that's who helped me out with that lens. And I bought the Sigma straight clean. And then this is my new, my second brand new lens. I'm hoping to get a, a zoom lens soon. I would like to get that 55 mil, of course, the Zeiss. Ooh wee, okay. All right, get the bubble wrap. Addicting, let it go. Yeah, I'm definitely hoping to get a zoom lens soon though. You do get a lens hood with this lens with the 85, you do get a lens hood. I definitely hope to get a zoom lens soon though because uh, it will kind of help fill out my, ro my roster or my artillery, you could say of lenses i want to get the 55 of course just to replace that just because when i was at the camera camp as i told you guys that 55 is something different so if i can get that 55 zeiss which seems like it keeps going up in price i at one time i saw it for 700 now it's like 900 oh no and then i saw it at 900 now it's like a thousand so it, it that lens is creeping up i don't want to help you but you know what i'm saying just let me know all right so now take this last piece of All right, look at this beauty here. So you guys wanna see that here. The the build feels different than the 50 mil. And if you guys want a comparison of size, you see it's just a little bit bigger, not like substantially bigger, like Rokinon's 85, I think was substantially bigger than this. And then Viltrox's had them looked, or at least appeared to have had even a bigger lens front than this now the nice part about this is it is metal built but i believe this one's metal built too but it looks like it's it might be coated in plastic it, it's light this one's a little heavier but of course it's light in comparison to like my sigma 16 or like the rokinon lens i believe is probably heavier than this now this is an electronic uh focus ring but it, and it fo you know focuses and defocuses you know at a, at a nice pace so that way it feels like you're doing it you get a customizable button and you get the manual focus autofocus button right there but since i'm it, this is going to be hooked up to my sony camera and i have it already customized to change between manual focus and autofocus with a custom button i don't think i'll be using this but it is nice to know that it's right there so if i'm holding the lens if i really wanted to you know whoop de whoop then you know i feel for it click click now the custom button is going to be the interesting part because I don't know if I'm going to use that. I don't know if I'm going to use the, the custom button on here 
just because I have all my other custom buttons. So it's like, what would I need this for? I already have my autofocus on, uh, you know, the cut on. Maybe if I could change my my focus style or my focus area, maybe I might use that. See, like how I'm shooting right now, I'm probably shooting in wide or center for my focus area. But let's say I wanted to use like zone shooting for, for photography or for B-roll. Uh, maybe I could do something like that. This is a nice lens made in Vietnam. Now, once I take this bad boy off, look at that. Boy. <coughs> I'm not sick, y'all. Look at that. Oh, peer down into the eye of the abyss. That's nice. Now, I'm not, I don't want it to get damaged or nothing. So, let me go ahead and put this back on. I'm very delicate with this kind of stuff because this stuff costs a lot of money. This lens costs $600. I'm not mad at it. It seems uh, well, we all know who do photography, especially lenses hold their value. And I don't plan on getting rid of this lens unless I decide to upgrade to the G Master, which is at f1.4, I believe. But even then, to me, I don't think that'll be as big of a deal. I mean, this is weather sealed, I believe it, it is rather resistant. Um, so I don't know if I would really move on to the G Master variant of this. Uh, whatever lens I don't have. I would probably want to buy that as a G Master first and not have to kind of buy one than the other. That's how I would try to save money. So like the 24 to 70, I would get that as a G Master. I know it's like 2200, but that would be the one zoom lens I would get as a G Master because I, I, I know I probably wouldn't upgrade from that anytime soon. And then possibly the 70 to 200 G Master, maybe, but I know that one's a grip. So, but that gives you a good floor range of any you know, focal length that you would need to, to get some shooting done. You could just carry those two lenses around. And you're pretty much good. Now, gimbal wise, it'd be hard to balance. But if you weren't using a gimbal, those two lenses, you'd probably be set for. But the three I have so far is the 16 mil, the 50 mil, and now the 85 mil that I am more than ready to use. I might go take it out today. Just go shoot a couple bushes. You know what I'm saying? So, but hey, that's it for this video. Hope you guys appreciate it and enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments below. Are you into photography? Do you like hearing about photography, especially on this channel? Are you as excited as I am to see just more steps taken into like learning what can be done with cameras and trying new things? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, have you used the 85 before? Are you interested in the 85? What lenses do you use? Again, the comment section is open for discussion. But again, if you haven't already, make sure you guys ignite that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you guys hit that notification bell. So that way you guys stay informed. Cha-ching! When I drop videos. But your boy Versal signing out. And until the next video. Wait for it.